The following tutorial is a sample video from a full course. To watch the entire course and many others, please visit digitaltutors.com to find hundreds of other free videos or sign up for a subscription and experience our entire library. Let's begin by talking about what ZBrush can be used for, and we'll get a quick overview of the interface. So ZBrush is used primarily to create highly detailed models using methods that are a little bit more akin to traditional techniques, uh, traditional sculpting. So we're able to create high resolution models without worrying too much uh, about the topology and the technical aspects of working with that geometry, at least initially. Okay? And it can also be used for illustration purposes. So let's take a look at the interface, just getting started here. And this is the default interface. The interface is very flexible in terms of how you want to lay things out, but we'll be just concentrating on the uh, kind of standard interface that we've got here. So up at the top, you'll see that we have sort of a menu here. These are all of the different palettes that we can use. Okay, Palettes can be dropped into what are called trays. So in this case, you see the little lines over here, the little arrows on both sides okay, and on the bottom as well. I can go ahead and click to open that up and I can grab any of these palettes. Okay, you can see I can open that up and it contains a number of items here. I can click and drag that over and so now this palette is residing within this particular tray which I can minimize. You can see over here we have the tool palette in our tray. Okay, and you can actually move up if you've got a number of sub palettes in here. So for instance you don't need to follow along but just to illustrate, you can see that now that I have an object here, I've got a number of sub palettes within this tool palette, and they're all located within this tray. So if I expand any of these out, you can see that the, uh, the, the palette expands, and I can just click and drag to move up and down within the tray. Okay? So we've got the trays. You can just click to move that back. We've got the palettes located up here that can be placed in the trays. We've got the shelf on the side here, which contains uh, a number of frequently used items here, and we'll talk about these individually as we go through this process. Okay, We've also got navigation controls over here on the right-hand side. Uh, down here, we've got some navigation controls for when we're in our working with 3D models uh, versus working with our uh, 2D document, 2.5D document. Uh, up at the top here, we have several buttons. Okay can see that we have edit and draw okay so uh, draw mode is going to be we're going to be able to add uh, information to our canvas edit mode we're going to be able to move around and edit our 3d model okay so whenever we're working with a 3d model and, and we want to rotate around it and we want to work with it uh, we're going to want to go into edit mode and we'll talk a little bit about that in the next lesson we've got a couple of uh, three buttons here for moving scaling and rotating okay we also down here have the ability to move, scale, and rotate around our model in the canvas. Next to that, we have the color controls here. So as we're adding information to our scene or painting our model, uh, we want to either paint with the material, the M button. So if we want to paint just a material on our object or canvas, we can choose that button. The RGB is simply color. So if we want to add color, and then MRGB is simply combination of material and color. So if we want to add a specific material with a specific color, we would want to turn that button on. And then the RGB intensity slider uh, tells us how much of that color is added. Okay, next to that we have our, uh, our sculpting controls. And so this controls whether uh, the sculpt that we create on our model is actually added to the model, so kind of pulled out, or whether it's subtracted, pushed in. And the Z intensity is the same thing. It kind of controls how much of that happens. Okay. And then we have also our brush controls with the focal shift and draw size located uh, over here. All right. Down here, you'll see that we have sort of a file browser. This is a light box. And we can pop that up and down by hitting the light box button up here at the top. And this just allows us to navigate through and find, for instance, different tools that we want to open maybe different brushes that we may want to open. Uh, there are a lot of default brushes and tools and textures and alphas that are going to come with ZBrush, but you can also add your own paths to this uh, to be able to uh, you know, add your own, if you have your own tools that you would want to use or your own images that you would want to use, uh, you can add it to the light box. 
okay? This area in here is going to be just our main canvas where we're going to be doing our painting and our sculpting and all of our work here uh, within the canvas. Okay, as far as navigating around, um, won't tr worry too much about the object in here, just concentrate on kind of the moving around. So I'm going to hold down Alt and clicking and dragging in the canvas with the left mouse button is going to allow me to move around. If I just click and drag, you can kind of see that rotating. Okay, turn on our polyframe to see the wireframe, and you can see that a little bit better moving around. So we're rotating that around. Now, if I want to zoom in, as I just did a second ago, we want to hold down Alt, click in the, on the canvas, and then release Alt. And then as I drag, I can move in and out. Okay, so if I just hold down Alt and left mouse button, I'm moving. If I hold down Alt, left mouse button, and then before I move, I release Alt, I'm going to go in and out. Okay, so that's uh, maybe a little bit uh, unusual to get used to as far as the, the key combination of how to actually do that. Uh, but once you get used to it, it's pretty seamless. Okay, so that's how we can sort of move around. You can also use these buttons over here to do the same thing. Okay, and again, the polyframe button just allows us to see that wireframe on top of our, uh, on top of our model. Okay, so now that we've kind of looked at the interface and what some of these things are, where they're located, how to work with palettes, uh, the next thing that we want to look at is how we deal with the actual files in ZBrush. It's going to be a little bit different. You saw how I added this uh, sphere. We'll go through that process, talk about the fact that this is a, a tool, uh, referred to as a tool or a Z tool here in ZBrush, not necessarily a model or a scene. Um, and then we'll talk about documents and projects. Um, and uh, getting files out, images and movies and things like that. So we'll uh, take a look in the next lesson as, at working with the various types of files here in ZBrush.